What truly makes a nation a superpower? Is it nuclear weapons? If that were true, Pakistan and North Korea would rule the world. They might feed that lie to their people, but the reality is far different. Nukes don't win wars, they only deter them. Real power comes from weapons so advanced, they render your enemy's most elite systems useless. And now, India stands on the brink of a military revolution. Not with one, not with two, but with three such game-changing weapons. They are coming, and when they arrive, modern warfare will never be the same. But what are they? And how will they change modern warfare forever? That's what we're going to discuss. What is the ultimate threat in the sky? Fighter jets? Yes, maybe, but even they have limits. Most can only see what's ahead, not what's sneaking up behind. That's why they need AWACS, Airborne Early Warning and Control Systems. An AWACS is a massive aircraft with a radar so powerful it can detect fighter jets by their radar cross-section from 200 to 300 kilometers and larger aircraft from 400 to 500 kilometers away. And unlike a stationary airbase, AWACS are hard to destroy because the moment you head toward them, they simply turn and fly away. Pakistan has several of these airborne eyes in the sky, supplied by China, to help them face India. Normally, having AWACS means your airspace is secure unless you're fighting India. Because India has just unveiled something that will turn an AWACS pilot's life into a nightmare. Russia has it. China kind of has it. But India is about to get something better. A long-range air-to-air missile so deadly it can be fired from Indian airspace and destroy enemy AWACS deep inside their own skies before they can do a damn thing about it. This missile will find them. If they're on the ground, BrahMos will finish them. Checkmate. The missile is the Astra-3, the next generation of AWACS killer weapons. Its range, 340 kilometers, matching the Russian R-37M, but without its weaknesses. Most anti-AWACS missiles are huge and bulky, useless for agile, low-flying fighters. The French Meteor missile solved this with a ramjet engine capable of hitting both fighters and AWACS, but it's slower, Mach 4, and has less range, 200 kilometers. The Astra 3 changes everything. It has an active ASA radar like the Meteor, giving it the ability to track stealth aircraft. Even if it temporarily loses its target, it can receive targeting data from other Indian fighters or AWACS and reacquire, whether it's a low-flying jet or an AWACS 200 kilometers away. India has done something remarkable, combining the strengths of Russian, French, and NATO designs into one perfect missile. But as incredible as the Astromac 3 will be, it's only the beginning. Because the next weapon on the list will make any nation think twice before even considering going to war with India. Have you ever heard of the BrahMos missile? Of course you have. The whole world has. It's one of the deadliest weapons ever created. When it entered service, it was so advanced it actually put India ahead of the United States in certain missile technologies. I've made a full video about BrahMos. Check the link in the description below. BrahMos has a top speed of Mach 3. But here's a question. Why not make it faster? The answer is brutal physics. BrahMos is a cruise missile that flies at low altitude, which means it moves through dense air. That creates intense friction, generating so much heat that it could literally melt the metal, warp the frame, and cause the missile to explode mid-air. You could try using heavy metals to withstand the heat, but then the missile would be too heavy, slow, and plagued with a million other problems. To break that barrier, you'd need something almost like magic, a material that's lightweight, incredibly strong, and capable of surviving extreme G-forces and blistering heat without bending or melting. Well, it turns out Indian engineers are also magicians because they didn't just make the missile faster by a little, not by Mach 1, not by Mach 2, they created a missile that hits Mach 8. Yes, they added five Mach to the already deadly BrahMos. How is that even possible? My brain can barely comprehend it. This missile can still fly at low altitude to avoid detection, but now it can zigzag at hypersonic speeds, giving the world exactly zero chance to intercept it. Its name, ETLDHCM the scariest weapon on the planet. Why? Simple. You can put a nuclear warhead on it and no defense system in existence can stop it. Checkmate. 
it uses a scramjet engine, making it more efficient at low altitude and extending its range to 1,800 kilometers. And this isn't just theory. India has already tested it. But here's the part will keep military planners awake at night. This missile can be launched from a fighter jet. That means if India decides to destroy a target, no matter what it is or where it is, that target will be destroyed. There's just one catch. Like the last weapon, India cannot sell this missile to other countries. It's so advanced and strategically important that India can't risk its enemies getting their hands on its secrets. So India needs something else, simpler, but still deadly. Something that can dominate the global defense market and make India rich. There's one weapon, one obsession, that every major power covets. And for decades, critics have mocked India for not having it. You've probably guessed, yes, it's a fighter jet. But here's the truth, no one tells you. Building one is nothing like what people imagine. Because when you commit billions to creating the infrastructure, you're not just producing an aircraft, you're building an empire. With every jet you sell, you're selling pilot training, spare parts, weapons, and raking in the kind of money most nations can only dream of. But the real treasure isn't money. It's something far more dangerous. Data. Every fighter jet is a flying spy. It records every radar pulse, every signal in the sky. If it spots an aircraft, it logs its radar cross-section, its unique signature, every microscopic detail. And over time, this builds a database so powerful it can change the outcome of wars. Here's a chilling example. The F-15 Eagle, using decades-old data from the Cold War, can identify an approaching enemy jet even with its radar switched off, just by the way its front fan blades reflect radar waves. That's how it can say, that's not just a fighter, it's a MiG-29, or in Su-27. This isn't just technology, this is knowledge, and knowledge is power. India's Tejas fighter was the first step, a light fighter that I believe is one of the finest in its class. I've made a full video about it, link in the description. But the new version, the Tejas Mech 2, this isn't just a step forward, it's a leap into the future. It's smaller than every rival, yet it dominates in performance. The Tejas Mech 2 can strike from 650 nautical miles away, while the larger Saab Gripen barely reaches 430. It carries half a ton more weapons, with 11 hard points compared to the Gripen 7. Its avionics are sharper, its systems more advanced. And now, with the addition of a canard, it can dance through high-speed, one-circle dogfights like a predator closing in for the kill. But all of this is just the beginning. Because the Tejas 2 is paving the runway for something even greater, India's fifth-generation stealth fighter. And when that day comes, it won't just be another aircraft. It could change the balance of power in the skies forever. If you want to see why, watch the this video. And remember, every like, every subscribe helps us keep bringing you the stories others want told. This is Caspian Insight, signing off.